Wicca English, also termed pagan witchcraft, is a contemporary pagan new religious movement. It was developed in England during the first half of the 20th century and was introduced to the public in 1954 by Gerald Gardner, a retired British civil servant. Wicca draws upon a diverse set of ancient pagan and 20th century hermetic motifs for its theological structure and ritual practices. Wicca has no central authority figure. Its traditional core beliefs, principles and practices were originally outlined in the 1940s and 1950s by Gardner and Doreen Valiente, both in published books as well as in secret written and oral teachings passed along to their initiates. There are many variations on the core structure, and the religion grows and evolves over time. It is divided into a number of diverse lineages, sects and denominations, referred to as traditions, each with its own organizational structure and level of centralization. Due to its decentralized nature, there is some disagreement over what actually constitutes Wicca. Some traditions, collectively referred to as British traditional Wicca, strictly follow the initiatory lineage of Gardner and consider the term Wicca to apply only to similar traditions, but not to newer, eclectic traditions. Wicca is typically duotheistic, worshipping a goddess and a god. These are traditionally viewed as the moon goddess and the horned god, respectively. These deities may be regarded in a henotheistic way, as having many different divine aspects which can in turn be identified with many diverse pagan deities from different historical pantheons. For this reason, they are sometimes referred to as the Great Goddess and the Great Horned God, with the adjective Great connoting a deity that contains many other deities within their own nature. These two deities are sometimes viewed as facets of a greater pantheistic divinity, which is regarded as an impersonal force or process rather than a personal deity. While Dwotheism or Bithyism is traditional in Wicca, broader Wiccan beliefs range from polytheism to pantheism or monism, even to goddess monotheism. Wiccan celebrations encompass both the cycles of the moon, known as esbats and commonly associated with the goddess female deity, and the cycles of the sun, seasonally based festivals known as sabbats and commonly associated with the horned god male deity. An unattributed statement known as the Wiccan reed is a popular expression of Wiccan morality, although it is not universally accepted by Wiccans. Wicca often involves the ritual practice of magic, though it is not always necessary. Topic. Definition and terminology Scholars of religious studies classify Wicca as a new religious movement, and more specifically as a form of modern paganism. Cited as the largest, best known, most influential, and most extensively academically studied form of paganism, within the movement it has been identified as sitting on the former end of the eclectic to reconstructionist spectrum. Several academics have also categorized Wicca as a form of nature religion, a term that is also embraced by many of the faith's practitioners. However, given that Wicca also incorporates the practice of magic, several scholars have referred to it as a magico religion. Wicca is also a form of Western esotericism, and more specifically a part of the esoteric current known as occultism. Although recognized as a religion by academics, some evangelical Christians have attempted to deny it legal recognition as such, while some Wiccan practitioners themselves eschew the term religion, associating the latter purely with organized religion, instead favoring spirituality or way of life. Although Wicca as a religion is distinct from other forms of contemporary paganism, there has been much cross-fertilization between these different pagan faiths. Accordingly, Wicca has both influenced and been influenced by other pagan religions, thus making clear-cut distinctions between them more difficult for religious studies scholars to make. The terms wizard and warlock are generally discouraged in the community. In Wicca, denominations are referred to as traditions, while non-Wiccans are often termed Cowans. Topic. Witchcraft and Wicca When the religion first came to public attention, it was commonly called witchcraft. For instance, Gerald Gardner, the man regarded as the father of Wicca, referred to it as the craft of the wise, witchcraft, and the witch cult during the 1950s. There is no evidence that he ever called it Wicca although he did refer to the collective community of pagan witches as the WICA, with one C, as a name for the religion, Wicca, developed in Britain during the 1960s. 
It is not known who precisely invented the term Wicca in reference to the religion, although one possibility is that it might have been Gardner's rival Charles Cardell, who was referring to it as the craft of the Wissens by 1958. The first recorded use of the word Wicca appears in 1962, and it had been popularized to the extent that several British practitioners founded a newsletter called The Wiccan in 1968. Although pronounced differently, the modern English term, Wicca, is derived from the Old English Wicca and Wicce, the masculine and feminine term for which, respectively, that was used in Anglo-Saxon England. By adopting it for modern usage, Wiccans were both symbolically cementing their connection to the ancient, pre-Christian past, and adopting a self-designation that would be less controversial than witchcraft. In early sources, Wicca referred to the entirety of the religion rather than specific traditions. In ensuing decades, members of certain traditions, those known as British traditional Wicca, began claiming that only they should be termed Wiccan, and that other forms of the religion must not use it. From the late 1980s onwards various books propagating Wicca were published that again used the former, broader definition of the word. Thus, by the 1980s, there were two competing definitions of the word Wicca in use among the pagan and esoteric communities, one broad and inclusive, the other smaller and exclusionary. Although there are exceptions, among scholars of pagan studies it is the older, inclusive use of the term which has gained wider usage. Conversely, in various forms of popular culture, such as television programs Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Charmed, the word Wicca has been used as a synonym for witchcraft more generally, including in non-religious and non-pagan forms, alongside Wicca. Two other names often used for the religion by its practitioners are witchcraft and the craft. However, the use of the word witchcraft in this context is problematic because it causes confusion both with other, non-religious forms of witchcraft as well as other religions, such as Satanism and Luciferianism, whose practitioners sometimes describe themselves as witches. Another term that is at times used as a synonym for Wicca is pagan witchcraft, although there are also other forms of modern paganism, such as types of heathenry, which also practice magic and thus could be described as Pagan witchcraft. From the 1990s onward, various Wiccans began describing themselves as traditional witches, although problematically that was a term also employed by practitioners of other magico religious traditions such as Luciferianism. <laughs> <laughs> Beliefs <laughs> Theology Theological views within Wicca are diverse, and the religion encompasses theists, atheists, and agnostics, with some viewing the religion's deities as entities with a literal existence and others viewing them as Jungian archetypes or symbols. Even among theistic Wiccans, there are divergent beliefs, and Wicca includes pantheists, monotheists, duotheists, and polytheists. Common to these divergent perspectives, however, is that Wicca's deities are viewed as forms of ancient, pre Christian divinities by its practitioners. Most early Wiccan groups adhered to the duotheistic worship of a horned god of fertility and a mother goddess, with practitioners typically believing that these had been the ancient deities worshipped by the hunter gatherers of the Old Stone Age, whose veneration had been passed down in secret right to the present. This theology derived from Margaret Murray's claims about the witch cult. She claimed that whereas the cult as recorded in the early modern witch trials had venerated a horned god, centuries before it had also worshipped a mother goddess. This duotheistic horned god, mother goddess structure was embraced by Gardner, who claimed that it had Stone Age roots, and remains the underlying theological basis to his Gardnerian tradition. Gardner claimed that the names of these deities were to be kept secret within the tradition, although in 1964 they were publicly revealed to be Cernunnos and Aradia. The secret Gardnerian deity names were subsequently changed, although different Wiccans attribute different traits to the horned god. He is most often associated with animals and the natural world, but also with the afterlife, and he is furthermore often viewed as an ideal role model for men. The mother goddess has been associated with life, fertility, and the springtime, and has been described as an ideal role model for women. Wicca's duotheism has been compared to the Taoist system of yin and yang. As such they are often interpreted as being embodiments of a life force manifest in nature. Other Wiccans have adopted the original Gardnerian god-goddess duotheistic structure but have adopted deity forms other than that of the horned god and mother goddess. 
For instance, the god has been interpreted as the oak king and the holly king, as well as the sun god, sun, lover god, and vegetation god. He has also been seen in the roles of the leader of the wild hunt and the lord of death. The goddess is often portrayed as a triple goddess, thereby being a triadic deity comprising a maiden goddess, a mother goddess, and a crone goddess, each of whom has different associations, namely virginity, fertility and wisdom. Other Wiccan conceptualizations have portrayed her as a moon goddess and as a menstruating goddess. Gardner stated that beyond Wicca's two deities was the supreme deity, or prime mover, an entity that was too complex for humans to understand. This belief has been endorsed by other prominent practitioners, who have referred to it as the Cosmic Logos, Supreme Cosmic Power, or Godhead. Gardner envisioned this supreme deity as a deist entity who had created the under gods, among them the god and goddess, but who was not otherwise involved in the world. Alternately, other Wiccans have interpreted such an entity as a pantheistic being, of whom the god and goddess are facets, although Gardner criticized monotheism, citing the problem of evil. Explicitly monotheistic forms of Wicca developed in the 1960s, when the U.S. based Church of Wicca developed a theology rooted in the worship of what they described as one deity, without gender. In the 1970s, Dianic Wiccan groups developed which were devoted to a singular, monotheistic goddess. This approach was often criticized by members of British traditional Wiccan groups, who lambasted such goddess monotheism as an inverted imitation of Christian theology. As in other forms of Wicca, some goddess monotheists have expressed the view that the goddess is not an entity with a literal existence, but rather a Jungian archetype. As well as pantheism and duotheism, many Wiccans accept the concept of polytheism, thereby believing that there are many different deities. Some accept the view espoused by the occultist Dion Fortune that, "...all gods are one god, and all goddesses are one goddess." That is that the gods and goddesses of all cultures are, respectively, aspects of one supernal god and goddess. With this mindset, a Wiccan may regard the Germanic Eoster, Hindu Kali, and Catholic Virgin Mary each as manifestations of one supreme goddess and likewise, the Celtic Cernunnos, the ancient Greek Dionysus and the Judeo-Christian Yahweh as aspects of a single, archetypal god. A more strictly polytheistic approach holds the various goddesses and gods to be separate and distinct entities in their own right. The Wiccan writers Janet Farrar and Gavin Bone have postulated that Wicca is becoming more polytheistic as it matures, tending to embrace a more traditionally pagan worldview. Some Wiccans conceive of deities not as literal personalities but as metaphorical archetypes or thoughtforms, thereby technically allowing them to be atheists. Such a view was purported by the high priestess Viviane Crowley, herself a psychologist, who considered the Wiccan deities to be Jungian archetypes that existed within the subconscious that could be evoked in ritual. It was for this reason that she said that, "...the goddess and god manifest to us in dream and vision." Many Wiccans also adopt a more explicitly polytheistic or animistic world view of the universe as being replete with spirit beings. In many cases these spirits are associated with the natural world, for instance as genius loci, fairies, and elementals. In other cases, such beliefs are more idiosyncratic and atypical. The prominent Wiccan Sibyl League for instance endorsed a belief in angels. Topic. Afterlife Belief in the afterlife varies among Wiccans, and does not occupy a central place within the religion. As the historian Ronald Hutton remarked, the instinctual position of most Wiccans seems to be that if one makes the most of the present life, in all respects, then the next life is more or less certainly going to benefit from the process, and so one may as well concentrate on the present. Although there are practitioners who do not believe in any form of afterlife, it is nevertheless a common belief among Wiccans that human beings have a spirit or soul that survives bodily death. Understandings of what this soul constitutes vary among different traditions, with fairy Wicca for instance having adopted a belief from Hawaiian religion that the human being has three souls, although not accepted by all Wiccans, a belief in reincarnation is the dominant afterlife belief within Wicca, having been originally espoused by Gardner. Understandings of how the cycle of reincarnation operates differ among practitioners. The prominent Wiccan Raymond Buckland, for instance, insisted that the souls of humans would only ever incarnate into human bodies, whereas other Wiccans believe that the soul of a human can incarnate into any other life form. 
There is also a common Wiccan belief that any witches will come to be reincarnated as future witches, an idea originally expressed by Gardner. Gardner also articulated the view that the human soul rested for a period between bodily death and its incarnation, with this resting place commonly being referred to as the Summerland among the Wiccan community. This allows many Wiccans to believe that mediums are able to contact the spirits of the deceased, a belief that it adopted from spiritualism. Topic. Magic Many Wiccans believe in magic, a manipulative force exercised through the practice of witchcraft or sorcery. Many Wiccans agree with the definition of magic offered by ceremonial magicians, such as Aleister Crowley, who declared that magic was the science and art of causing change to occur in conformity with will. While another prominent ceremonial magician, McGregor Mathers stated that it was the science of the control of the secret forces of nature. Many Wiccans believe magic to be a law of nature, as yet misunderstood or disregarded by contemporary science, and as such they do not view it as being supernatural, but a part of what Leo Martello calls the super powers that reside in the natural. Some Wiccans believe that magic is simply making full use of the five senses in order to achieve surprising results, whilst other Wiccans do not claim to know how magic works, merely believing that it does because they have observed it to be so. Some spell it magic, a variation coined by the influential occultist Aleister Crowley, though this spelling is more commonly associated with Crowley's religion of Thelema than with Wicca. During ritual practices, which are often staged in a sacred circle, Wiccans cast spells or workings, intended to bring about real changes in the physical world. Common Wiccan spells include those used for healing, for protection, fertility, or to banish negative influences. Many early Wiccans, such as Alex Sanders, Sybil Leake and Alex Winfield, referred to their own magic as white magic, which contrasted with black magic, which they associated with evil and Satanism. Sanders also used the similar terminology of left-hand path, to describe malevolent magic, and right hand path to describe magic performed with good intentions, terminology that had originated with the occultist Helena Blavatsky in the 19th century. Some modern Wiccans, however, have stopped using the white black magic and left right hand path dichotomies, arguing, for instance, that the color black should not necessarily have any associations with evil. Scholars of religion Rodney Stark and William Bainbridge claimed in 1985 that Wicca had reacted to secularization by a headlong plunge back into magic," and that it was a reactionary religion which would soon die out. This view was heavily criticized in 1999 by the historian Ronald Hutton who claimed that the evidence displayed the very opposite, that a large number of Wiccans were in jobs at the cutting edge of scientific culture, such as computer technology. <laughs> Morality. There exists no dogmatic moral or ethical code followed universally by Wiccans of all traditions, however a majority follow a code known as the Wiccan Reed, which states, "...and it harm none, do what ye will." This is usually interpreted as a declaration of the freedom to act, along with the necessity of taking responsibility for what follows from one's actions and minimizing harm to oneself and others. Another common element of Wiccan morality is the law of threefold return, which holds that whatever benevolent or malevolent actions a person performs will return to that person with triple force, or with equal force on each of the three levels of body, mind, and spirit, similar to the Eastern idea of karma. The Wiccan Reed was most likely introduced into Wicca by Gerald Gardner and formalized publicly by Doreen Valiente, one of his high priestesses. The Threefold Law was an interpretation of Wiccan ideas and ritual, made by Monique Wilson and further popularized by Raymond Buckland, in his books on Wicca. Many Wiccans also seek to cultivate a set of eight virtues mentioned in Doreen Valiente's Charge of the Goddess, these being mirth, reverence, honor, humility, strength, beauty, power, and compassion. In Valiente's poem, they are ordered in pairs of complementary opposites, reflecting a dualism that is common throughout Wiccan philosophy. Some lineaged Wiccans also observe a set of Wiccan laws, commonly called the craft laws or ardanes, 30 of which exist in the Gardnerian tradition and 161 of which are in the Alexandrian tradition. 
Valiente, one of Gardner's original high priestesses, argued that the first thirty of these rules were most likely invented by Gerald Gardner himself in mock archaic language as the byproduct of inner conflict within his Bricket Wood Coven, the others were later additions made by Alex Sanders during the 1960s. Although Gerald Gardner initially demonstrated an aversion to homosexuality, claiming that it brought down the curse of the goddess. It is now generally accepted in all traditions of Wicca, with groups such as the Minoan Brotherhood openly basing their philosophy upon it, and various important figures in the craft, such as Alex Sanders and Eddie Baczynski, being openly homosexual or bisexual. Topic. Five elements Many traditions hold a belief in the five classical elements, although they are seen as symbolic as representations of the phases of matter. These five elements are invoked during many magical rituals, notably when consecrating a magic circle. The five elements are air, fire, water, earth, and ether or spirit. Ether unites the other four. Various analogies have been devised to explain the concept of the five elements, for instance, the Wiccan Anne-Marie Gallagher used that of a tree, which is composed of earth with the soil and plant matter, water sap and moisture, fire through photosynthesis and air the creation of oxygen from carbon dioxide, all of which are believed to be united through spirit. Traditionally in the Gardnerian craft, each element has been associated with a cardinal point of the compass, air with east, fire with south, water with west, earth with north, and the spirit with center. However, some Wiccans, such as Frederick Lamond, have claimed that the set cardinal points are only those applicable to the geography of southern England, where Wicca evolved, and that Wiccans should determine which directions best suit each element in their region. For instance, those living on the east coast of North America should invoke water in the east and not the west because the colossal body of water, the Atlantic Ocean, is to their east. Other craft groups have associated the elements with different cardinal points, for instance Robert Cochran's clan of Tubalcane associated earth with south, fire with east, water with west and air with north, and each of which were controlled over by a different deity who were seen as children of the primary horned god and goddess. The five elements are symbolized by the five points of the pentagram, the most prominently used symbol of Wicca. Topic. Practices The neo-pagan researcher and high priestess Margot Adler, who defined ritual as being one method of reintegrating individuals and groups into the cosmos, and to tie in the activities of daily life with their ever-present, often forgotten, significance noted that rituals, celebrations and rites of passage in Wicca are not dry, formalized, repetitive experiences, but are performed with the purpose of inducing a religious experience in the participants, thereby altering their consciousness. She noted that many Wiccans remain skeptical about the existence of the gods, afterlife etc. but remain involved in the craft because of its ritual experiences, with one, Glenna Turner, saying that, I love myth, dream, visionary art. The craft is a place where all of these things fit together, beauty, pageantry, music, dance, song, dream." The high priest and craft historian Aidan Kelly claimed that the practices and experiences within Wicca were actually far more important than the beliefs, stating that, "...it's a religion of ritual rather than theology. The ritual is first, the myth is second. And taking an attitude that the myths of the craft are true history in the way a fundamentalist looks at the legends of Genesis really seems crazy. It's an alien head space. Similarly, Adler stated that, ironically, considering the many pronouncements against witchcraft as a threat to reason, the craft is one of the few religious viewpoints totally compatible with modern science, allowing total skepticism about even its own methods, myths, and rituals. Topic. Ritual practices The practice of Wicca often involves the ritual practice of magic, ranging from the low magic or folk magic of shamanism and witchcraft to more elaborate and complex rites influenced by the ceremonial magic of the Western Hermetic tradition. There are many rituals within Wicca that are used when celebrating the Sabbaths, worshipping the deities and working magic. Often these take place on a full moon, or in some cases a new moon, which is known as an esbot. In typical rites, the coven or solitary assembles inside a ritually cast and purified magic circle. Casting the circle may involve the invocation of the guardians 
of the cardinal points, alongside their respective classical elements, air, fire, water and earth. Once the circle is cast, a seasonal ritual may be performed, prayers to the god and goddess are said, and spells are sometimes worked. These may include various forms of raising energy, including raising a cone of power for the purposes of sending healing or other magic to persons outside of the sacred space. The classical ritual scheme in British traditional Wicca traditions is Purification of the sacred space and the participants Casting the circle Calling of the elemental quarters Cone of power Drawing down the gods Spellcasting Great rite Wine, cakes, chanting, dancing, games Farewell to the quarters and participants These rites often include a special set of magical tools. These usually include a knife called an athame, a wand, a pentacle and a chalice, but other tools include a broomstick known as a besom, a cauldron, candles, incense and a curved blade known as a baline. An altar is usually present in the circle, on which ritual tools are placed and representations of the god and the goddess may be displayed. Before entering the circle, some traditions fast for the day, and or ritually bathe. After a ritual has finished, the god, goddess and guardians are thanked, the directions are dismissed and the circle is closed. A central aspect of Wicca, particularly in Gardnerian and Alexandrian Wicca, often sensationalized by the media is the traditional practice of working in the nude, also known as skyclad. This practice seemingly derives from a line in Aradia, Charles Leland's supposed record of Italian witchcraft. Other traditions wear robes with cords tied around the waist or even normal street clothes. In certain traditions, ritualized sex magic is performed in the form of the Great Rite, whereby a high priest and high priestess invoke the god and goddess to possess them before performing sexual intercourse to raise magical energy for use in spellwork. In nearly all cases it is instead performed, in token, thereby merely symbolically, using the athame to symbolize the penis and the chalice to symbolize the womb. One of Wicca's best known liturgical texts is, the charge of the goddess. The most commonly used version used by Wiccans today is the recension of Doreen Valiente, who developed it from Gardner's version. Gardner's wording of the original, charge, added extracts from the works of Alistair Crowley's work, including the Book of the Law, especially from CH1, spoken by Nui, the star goddess thus linking modern Wicca irrevocably to the principles of Thelema. Valiente rewrote Gardner's version in verse, keeping the material derived from Aradia, but removing the material from Crowley. Topic. Wheel of the Year Wiccans celebrate several seasonal festivals of the year, commonly known as Sabbats. Collectively, these occasions are termed the Wheel of the Year. Most Wiccans celebrate a set of eight of these Sabbats, however, other groups such as those associated with the clan of Tubal Cain only follow four. In the rare case of the Ros and Buka group from Cornwall, only six are adhered to. The four Sabbats that are common to all British-derived groups are the cross-quarter days, sometimes referred to as Greater Sabbats. The names of these festivals are in some cases taken from the old Irish fire festivals, though in most traditional Wiccan covens the only commonality with the Celtic festival is the name. Gardner himself made use of the English names of these holidays, stating that, "...the four great Sabbats are Candlemas Sick, May Eve, Lamas, and Halloween, the equinoxes and solstices are celebrated also." In the Egyptologist Margaret Murray's The Witch Cult in Western Europe 1921 and The God of the Witches 1933, in which she dealt with what she believed had been a historical witch cult, she stated that the four main festivals had survived Christianization and had been celebrated in the pagan witchcraft religion. Subsequently, when Wicca was first developing in the 1930s through to the 1960s, many of the early groups, such as Robert Cochran's clan of Tubal Cain and Gerald Gardner's Brickett Wood Coven, adopted the commemoration of these four Sabbats as described by Murray. The other four festivals commemorated by many Wiccans are known as Lesser Sabbats, and they comprise the solstices and the equinoxes, and they were only adopted in 1958 by members of the Brickett Wood Coven, before they were subsequently adopted by other followers of the Gardnerian tradition. And they were eventually adopted by followers of other traditions like Alexandrian Wicca and the Dianic tradition. The names of these holidays that are commonly used today are often taken from Germanic pagan holidays. However, the festivals are not reconstructive in nature nor do they often resemble their historical counterparts, instead they exhibit a form of universalism. 
The rituals that are observed may display cultural influences from the holidays from which they take their names as well as influences from other unrelated cultures. Rites of passage Various rites of passage can be found within Wicca. Perhaps the most significant of these is an initiation ritual, through which somebody joins the craft and becomes a Wiccan. In British traditional Wiccan by the way, traditions, there is a line of initiatory descent that goes back to Gerald Gardner, and from him is said to go back to the New Forest Coven, however, the existence of this coven remains unproven. Gardner himself claimed that there was a traditional length of a year and a day between when a person began studying the craft and when they were initiated, although he frequently broke this rule with initiates. In By the Way, initiation only accepts someone into the first degree. To proceed to the second degree, an initiate has to go through another ceremony, in which they name and describe the uses of the ritual tools and implements. It is also at this ceremony that they are given their craft name. By holding the rank of second degree, a by the way is considered capable of initiating others into the craft, or founding their own semi-autonomous covens. The third degree is the highest in by the way, and it involves the participation of the great rite, either actual or symbolically, and in some cases ritual flagellation, which is a rite often dispensed with due to its sadomasochistic overtones. By holding this rank, an initiate is considered capable of forming covens that are entirely autonomous of their parent coven. According to New Age religious scholar James R. Lewis, in his book Witchcraft Today, an encyclopedia of Wiccan and neo pagan traditions, a high priestess becomes a queen when she has successfully hived off her first new coven under a new third degree high priestess in the Orthodox Gardnerian system. She then becomes eligible to wear the moon crown. The sequence of high priestess and queens traced back to Gerald Gardner is known as a lineage, and every orthodox Gardnerian high priestess has a set of lineage papers, proving the authenticity of her status. This three-tier degree system following initiation is largely unique to By the Way, and traditions heavily based upon it. The Cochranian tradition, which is not by the way, but based upon the teachings of Robert Cochran, does not have the three degrees of initiation, merely having the stages of novice and initiate. Some solitary Wiccans also perform self-initiation rituals, to dedicate themselves to becoming a Wiccan. The first of these to be published was in Paul Hewson's Mastering Witchcraft 1970, an unusually involved recitation of the Lord's Prayer backwards as a symbol of defiance against the historical witch hunt. Subsequent, more overtly pagan self-initiation rituals have since been published in books designed for solitary Wiccans by authors like Doreen Valiente, Scott Cunningham and Silver Ravenwolf. Handfasting is another celebration held by Wiccans, and is the commonly used term for their weddings. Some Wiccans observe the practice of a trial marriage for a year and a day, which some traditions hold should be contracted on the Sabbath of Lunasa, as this was the traditional time for trial Telltown marriages among the Irish. A common marriage vow in Wicca is, for as long as love lasts, instead of the traditional Christian, till death do us part. The first known Wiccan wedding ceremony took part in 1960 amongst the Bricket Wood Coven, between Frederick Lamond and his first wife, Gillian. Infants in Wiccan families may be involved in a ritual called a Wiccaning, which is analogous to a christening. The purpose of this is to present the infant to the god and goddess for protection. Parents are advised to give their children the gift of Wicca in a manner suitable to their age. In accordance with the importance put on free will in Wicca, the child is not expected or required to adhere to Wicca or other forms of paganism should they not wish to do so when they reach adulthood. Topic. Book of Shadows In Wicca, there is no set sacred text such as the Christian Bible, Jewish Tanakh, Hindu Gita or Islamic Quran, although there are certain scriptures and texts that various traditions hold to be important and influence their beliefs and practices. Gerald Gardner used a book containing many different texts in his covens, known as the Book of Shadows among other names, which he would frequently add to and adapt. In his Book of Shadows, there are texts taken from various sources, including Charles Godfrey Leland's Aradia, or The Gospel of the Witches 1899, and the works of 19th-20th century occultist Alistair Crowley, whom Gardner knew personally. Also in the book are examples of poetry largely composed by Gardner and his high priestess Doreen Valiente, the most notable of which is The Charge of the Goddess. 
Similar in use to the grimoires of ceremonial magicians, the book contained instructions for how to perform rituals and spells, as well as religious poetry and chants like Echo Echo Azarak to use in those rituals. Gardner's original intention was that every copy of the book would be different, because a student would copy from their initiators, but changing things which they felt to be personally ineffective. However amongst many Gardnerian witches today, particularly in the United States, all copies of the book are kept identical to the version that the High Priestess Monique Wilson copied from Gardner, with nothing being altered. The Book of Shadows was originally meant to be kept a secret from non-initiates into By the Way, but parts of the book have been published by authors including Charles Cardell, Lady Sheba, Janet Farrar and Stuart Farrar. Traditions In the 1950s through to the 1970s, when the Wiccan movement was largely confined to lineage groups such as Gardnerian Wicca and Alexandrian Wicca, a tradition usually implied the transfer of a lineage by initiation. However, with the rise of more and more such groups, often being founded by those with no previous initiatory lineage, the term came to be a synonym for a religious denomination within Wicca. There are many such traditions and there are also many solitary practitioners who do not align themselves with any particular lineage, working alone. There are also covens that have formed but who do not follow any particular tradition, instead choosing their influences and practices eclectically. Those traditions which trace a line of initiatory descent back to Gerald Gardner include Gardnerian Wicca, Alexandrian Wicca and the Algard tradition. Because of their joint history, they are often referred to as British traditional Wicca, particularly in North America. Other traditions trace their origins to different figures, even if their beliefs and practices have been influenced to a greater or lesser extent by Gardner. These include Cochrane's craft and the 1734 tradition, both of which trace their origins to Robert Cochrane, Fairy, which traces itself back to Victor Anderson and Gwydion Penderwin, and Dianic Wicca, whose followers often trace their influences back to Zhuzhana Budapest. Some of these groups prefer to refer to themselves as witches, thereby distinguishing themselves from the by the way traditions, who more typically use the term Wiccan. See etymology. Many traditions, including those of British traditional Wicca, require formal initiation within an established coven for membership of their respective traditions. In this manner, all BTWs can trace a direct line of descent all the way back to Gardner. Other traditions, however, do not hold this to be necessary. Wicca has also been customized to the various different national contexts into which it has been introduced, for instance, in Ireland, the veneration of ancient Irish deities has been incorporated into Wicca. Topic. Covens Lineaged Wicca is organized into covens of initiated priests and priestesses. Covens are autonomous, and are generally headed by a high priest and a high priestess working in partnership, being a couple who have each been through their first, second and third degrees of initiation. Occasionally the leaders of a coven are only second degree initiates, in which case they come under the rule of the parent coven. Initiation and training of new priesthood is most often performed within a coven environment, but this is not a necessity, and a few initiated Wiccans are unaffiliated with any coven. A commonly quoted Wiccan tradition holds that the ideal number of members for a coven is 13, though this is not held as a hard and fast rule. Indeed, many U.S. covens are far smaller, though the membership may be augmented by unaffiliated Wiccans at open rituals. When covens grow beyond their ideal number of members, they often split or hive into multiple covens, yet remain connected as a group. Initiation into a coven is traditionally preceded by an apprenticeship period of a year and a day. A course of study may be set during this period. In some covens a dedication ceremony may be performed during this period, some time before the initiation proper, allowing the person to attend certain rituals on a probationary basis. Some solitary Wiccans also choose to study for a year and a day before their self-dedication to the religion. Topic. Eclectic Wicca A large number of Wiccans do not exclusively follow any single tradition or even are initiated. These eclectic Wiccans each create their own syncretic spiritual paths by adopting and reinventing the beliefs and rituals of a variety of religious traditions connected to Wicca and broader paganism. 
While the origins of modern Wiccan practice lie in covenantal activity of select few initiates in established lineages, eclectic Wiccans are more often than not solitary practitioners uninitiated in any tradition. A widening public appetite, especially in the United States, made traditional initiation unable to satisfy demand for involvement in Wicca. Since the 1970s, larger, more informal, often publicly advertised camps and workshops began to take place. This less formal but more accessible form of Wicca proved successful. Eclectic Wicca is the most popular variety of Wicca in America and eclectics now significantly outnumber lineaged Wiccans. Eclectic Wicca is not necessarily the complete abandonment of tradition. Eclectic practitioners may follow their own individual ideas and ritual practices, while still drawing on one or more religious or philosophical paths. Eclectic approaches to Wicca often draw on Earth religion and ancient Egyptian, Greek, Saxon, Anglo-Saxon, Celtic, Asian, Jewish, and Polynesian traditions. History Topic. Origins, 1921–1935 Wicca was founded in England between 1921 and 1950, representing what the historian Ronald Hutton called, "...the only full-formed religion which England can be said to have given the world." Characterized as an "...invented tradition." By scholars, Wicca was created from the patchwork adoption of various older elements, many taken from pre existing religious and esoteric movements. Wicca took as its basis the witch cult hypothesis, the idea that those persecuted as witches during the early modern period in Europe were not, as the persecutors had claimed, followers of Satanism, but were instead adherents of a surviving pre Christian pagan religion. This theory had been first expressed by the German professor Karl Ernest Jarque in 1828, before being endorsed by German Franz Joseph Mohn and then the French historian Jules Michelet. In the late 19th century it was then adopted by two Americans, Matilda Jocelyn Gage and Charles Leland, the latter of whom promoted a variant of it in his 1899 book, Aradia, or The Gospel of the Witches. The theory's most prominent advocate was the English Egyptologist Margaret Murray, who promoted it in a series of books, most notably 1921's The Witch Cult in Western Europe and 1933's The God of the Witches, and in her entry on Witchcraft for the Encyclopaedia Britannica. The witch cult theory represented the historical narrative around which Wicca built itself. With the early Wiccans claiming to be the survivors of this ancient pagan religion, other influences upon early Wicca included various Western esoteric traditions and practices, among them ceremonial magic, Aleister Crowley and his religion of Thelema, Freemasonry, spiritualism, and theosophy. To a lesser extent, Wicca also drew upon folk magic and the practices of cunning folk. It was further influenced both by scholarly works on folkloristics, particularly James Fraser's The Golden Bough, as well as Romanticist writings like Robert Graves' The White Goddess, and pre existing modern pagan groups such as the Order of Woodcraft Chivalry and Druidism. It was during the 1930s that the first evidence appears for the practice of a pagan witchcraft religion what would be recognizable now as Wicca in England. It seems that several groups around the country, in such places as Norfolk, Cheshire and the New Forest had set themselves up as continuing in the tradition of Murray's witch cult, albeit with influences coming from disparate sources such as ceremonial magic, folk magic, Freemasonry, theosophy, Romanticism, Druidry, classical mythology, and Asian religions. Early development, 1936–1959 The history of Wicca starts with Gerald Gardner, the father of Wicca, in the mid 20th century. Gardner was a retired British civil servant and amateur anthropologist, with a broad familiarity in paganism and occultism. He claimed to have been initiated into a witch's coven in New Forest, Hampshire, in the late 1930s. Intent on perpetuating this craft, Gardner founded the Brickett Wood Coven with his wife Donna in the 1940s, after buying the Naturist Five Acres Country Club. Much of the coven's early membership was drawn from the club's members and its meetings were held within the club grounds. Many notable figures of early Wicca were direct initiates of this coven, including DAFO, Doreen Valiente, Jack Bracelin, Frederick Lamond, Dayanis, Eleanor Bone, and Lois Bourne. 
The witchcraft religion became more prominent beginning in 1951, with the repeal of the Witchcraft Act of 1735, after which Gerald Gardner and then others such as Charles Cardell and Cecil Williamson began publicizing their own versions of the craft. Gardner and others never used the term Wicca as a religious identifier, simply referring to the witch cult, witchcraft, and the old religion. However, Gardner did refer to witches as the WICA. During the 1960s, the name of the religion normalized to Wicca. Gardner's tradition, later termed Gardnerianism, soon became the dominant form in England and spread to other parts of the British Isles. Topic. Adaptation and spread, 1960–present Following Gardner's death in 1964, the craft continued to grow unabated despite sensationalism and negative portrayals in British tabloids, with new traditions being propagated by figures like Robert Cochrane, Sybil Leake, and most importantly Alex Sanders, whose Alexandrian Wicca, which was predominantly based upon Gardnerian Wicca, albeit with an emphasis placed on ceremonial magic, spread quickly and gained much media attention. Around this time, the term Wicca began to be commonly adopted over witchcraft", and the faith was exported to countries like Australia and the United States. It was in the United States and in Australia that new, homegrown traditions, sometimes based upon earlier, regional folk magical traditions and often mixed with the basic structure of Gardnerian Wicca, began to develop, including Victor Anderson's fairy tradition, Joseph Wilson's 1734 tradition, Aidan Kelly's new reformed Orthodox Order of the Golden Dawn, and eventually Zhuzhana Budapest's Dianic Wicca, each of which emphasized different aspects of the faith. It was also around this time that books teaching people how to become witches themselves without formal initiation or training began to emerge, among them Paul Hewson's Mastering Witchcraft 1970 and Lady Sheba's Book of Shadows 1971. Similar books continued to be published throughout the 1980s and 1990s, fueled by the writings of such authors as Doreen Valiente, Janet Farrar, Stuart Farrar, and Scott Cunningham, who popularized the idea of self-initiation into the craft. Among witches in Canada, anthropologist Dr. Heather Bodding Harden of the University of Victoria has been one of the most prominent, having been the first recognized Wiccan chaplain of a public university. Original High Priestess of Coven Celeste, she is one of the founders of the Canadian Aquarian Tabernacle Church. In the 1990s, amid ever rising numbers of self initiates, the popular media began to explore witchcraft. In fictional films like The Craft (1996) and television series like Charmed (1998 to 2006), introducing numbers of young people to the idea of religious witchcraft, this growing demographic was soon catered to through the internet and by authors like Silver Ravenwolf, much to the criticism of traditional Wiccan groups and individuals. In response to the way that Wicca was increasingly portrayed as trendy, eclectic, and influenced by the New Age movement, many witches turned to the pre-Gardnerian origins of the craft, and to the traditions of his rivals like Cardell and Cochrane, describing themselves as following, "...traditional witchcraft". Prominent groups within this traditional witchcraft revival included Andrew Chumbley's Cultus Sabati and the Cornish Rose and Buka Coven. Debates over the origin of Wicca According to Gerald Gardner's account in Witchcraft Today and the Meaning of Witchcraft, Wicca is the survival of a European witch cult that was persecuted during the witch trials. Theories of an organized pan-European witch cult, as well as mass trials thereof, have been largely discredited, but it is still common for Wiccans to claim solidarity with witch trial victims. The notion of the survival of Wiccan traditions and rituals from ancient sources is contested by most recent researchers, who suggest that Wicca is a 20th-century creation which combines elements of Freemasonry and 19th-century occultism. Historians such as Ronald Hutton have noted that Wicca predates the modern New Age movement and also differs markedly in its general philosophy. In his 1999 book The Triumph of the Moon, Bristol University history professor Ronald Hutton researched the Wiccan claim that ancient pagan customs have survived into modern times after being Christianized in medieval times as folk practices. Hutton found that most of the folk customs which are claimed to have pagan roots, such as the Maypole dance, actually date from the Middle Ages. 
He concluded that the idea that medieval revels were pagan in origin is a legacy of the Protestant Reformation. Modern scholarly investigations have concluded that witch trials were substantially fewer than the number claimed by Gardner, and seldom held at the behest of religious authorities. For example, in the 1996 book Witches and Neighbors, Robin Briggs examines the history of witchcraft in medieval Europe and refutes the widely told story that large numbers of independent women were burned at the stake by vindictive Christian ecclesiastics for the crime of practicing naturalistic healing or neo-pagan religion. Some scholars estimate that a total of 40,000 people were executed as witches during the entire medieval period, and that church authorities participated reluctantly in this process, which was largely fueled by the political turmoil of the Reformation. <laughs> Demographics The actual number of Wiccans worldwide is unknown, and it has been noted that it is more difficult to establish the numbers of members of neo-pagan faiths than many other religions due to their disorganized structure. However, Adherence.com, an independent website which specializes in collecting estimates of world religions, cites over 30 sources with estimates of numbers of Wiccans principally from the USA and the UK. From this, they developed a median estimate of 800,000 members. As of 2016, Doyle White suggested that there were hundreds of thousands of practicing Wiccans around the globe. In the United States, the American Religious Identification Survey has shown significant increases in the number of self identified Wiccans, from 8,000 in 1990, to 134,000 in 2001, and 342,000 in 2008. Wiccans have also made up significant proportions of various groups within that country, for instance, Wicca is the largest non-Christian faith practiced in the United States Air Force, with 1,434 airmen identifying themselves as such. In the United Kingdom, census figures on religion were first collected in 2001, no detailed statistics were reported outside of the six main religions. For the 2011 census a more detailed breakdown of responses was reported with 56,620 people identifying themselves as pagans, 11,766 as Wiccans and a further 1,276 describing their religion as witchcraft. Topic. Acceptance of Wiccans Wicca emerged in a predominantly Christian country, and from its inception the religion encountered opposition from certain Christian groups as well as from the popular tabloids like the News of the World. Some Christians still believe that Wicca is a form of Satanism, despite important differences between these two religions. Detractors typically depict Wicca as a form of malevolent Satanism. Due to negative connotations associated with witchcraft, many Wiccans continue the traditional practice of secrecy, concealing their faith for fear of persecution. Revealing oneself as a Wiccan to family, friends or colleagues is often termed, "...coming out of the broom closet." In a similar way, some people have accused Wicca of being anti-Christian, a claim disputed by Wiccans such as Doreen Valiente, who stated that whilst she knew many Wiccans who admired Jesus, Witches have little respect for the doctrines of the churches, which they regard as a lot of man-made dogma." The religious studies scholar Graham Harvey noted that, "...the popular and prevalent media image of Wicca is mostly inaccurate." In the United States, a number of legal decisions have improved and validated the status of Wiccans, especially Detmer v. Landon in 1986. However, Wiccans have encountered opposition from some politicians and Christian organizations, including former President of the United States George W. Bush, who stated that he did not believe Wicca to be a religion. In 2007, the United States Department of Veterans Affairs, after years of dispute, added the pentagram to the list of emblems of belief that can be included on government issued markers, headstones, and plaques honoring deceased veterans. In Canada, Dr. Heather Bodding, Lady Aurora, and Dr. Gary Bodding, Pan, the original High Priestess and High Priest of Coven Celeste and founding elders of the Aquarian Tabernacle Church, successfully campaigned the British Columbian government and the federal government in 1995 to allow them to perform recognized Wiccan weddings, to become prison and hospital chaplains, and in the case of Heather Bodding, to become the first officially recognized Wiccan chaplain in a public university. References Topic Notes Topic Footnotes 
Topic Sources Topic Wiccan literature Topic Further reading Significant historical works Gardner, Gerald. 1954. Witchcraft Today. Writer, Practices and Beliefs. Bado Fralick, Nikki. 2005. Coming to the Edge of the Circle: A Wiccan Initiation Ritual. Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-516645-0. History of Wicca. Kelly, Aidan A. 1991. Crafting the Art of Magic, A History of Modern Witchcraft, 1939-1964. Llewellyn. ISBN 0-87542-370-1. Hisselton, Philip. 2000. Wiccan Roots, Gerald Gardner and the Modern Witchcraft Revival. Kapal Ban. ISBN 1-86163-110-3. Hisselton, Philip. 2001. Gerald Gardner and the Witchcraft Revival, The Significance of His Life and Works to the Story of Modern Witchcraft. IHO Books. ISBN 1-872189-16-4. Hisselton, Philip. 2003. Gerald Gardner and the Cauldron of Inspiration, An Investigation into the Sources of Gardnerian Witchcraft. Kapal Ban. ISBN 1-86163-164-2. Wicca in Different Countries. Berger, Helen A. 1999. A Community of Witches, Contemporary Neo-Paganism and Witchcraft in the United States. University of South Carolina Press. ISBN 0-585-33796-9. Clifton, Chaz S. 2006. Her Hidden Children, The Rise of Wicca and Paganism in America. Altamira Press. ISBN 0-7591-0201-5. Magliocco, Sabina 2004. Witching Culture, Folklore and Neo-Paganism in America. University of Pennsylvania Press. ISBN 0-8122-3803-6. Hume, Lynn Witchcraft and Paganism in Australia. Melbourne University Press. ISBN 978-0-522-84782-6. General, Buckland, Raymond. The 1st of January 2002. The Witch Book: The Encyclopedia of Witchcraft, Wicca, and Neo-Paganism. Visible Ink Press. ISBN 1-57859-114-7. Lewis, James R. 1999. Witchcraft Today: An Encyclopedia of Wiccan and Neo-Pagan Traditions. ABC Clio. ISBN 1-57607-134-0. Rabinovich, Shelley, Lewis, James R., eds. 2002. The Encyclopedia of Modern Witchcraft and Neo-Paganism. Kensington. ISBN 0-8065-2406-5. Lewis, James R., ed. 1996. Magical Religion and Modern Witchcraft. State University of New York Press. ISBN 0-585-03650-0. Lerman, T. M. 1994. Persuasions of the Witch's Craft, Ritual Magic in Contemporary England. Picador. ISBN 978-0-330-32946-0. External links Wicca at Curlie